All right, guys, before we get into the podcast, let's get through the rigmarole first. Remember, guys, this podcast posts each and every single Wednesday. The first segment of the show, we go through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. The second segment of the show, we go through all the AFC East news you need to know about. The third segment of the show, we go through the, or excuse me, we preview game day. And the fourth and final segment of the show, we go through the Miami Dolphins fan Q&A where we answer fans' questions. This first news story, I think a bunch of Dolphins are going to be happy about uh, because I'm excited about uh, this to see some young players hit the field and this is what this report means and it's going to be very excited and I, exciting and i can't wait uh dolphins placed julius thomas on ir the dolphins placed placed tight end julius thomas and, and offensive lineman jermon bushrod on injured reserve in related moves they promoted tight end thomas durante or durante i can't remember how you say his name somebody tell me that in the comment section below and activated tackle eric smith off of injured reserve uh, the moves that uh, the move means that Thomas and Bushrod will not be able to suit up for the team's final two games against the Chiefs and Bills. This could also mean that the, the two players have played their final snaps for the Dolphins. Thomas is under contract with a excuse me with a 6.6 million dollar cap number next year, but the team can get out of the entire obligation by releasing him. Bushrod, meanwhile, is eligible for unrestricted, unrestricted free agency in March. Uh, this year, Thomas had 41 catches for 388 yards and three touchdowns. It's been wide, widely assumed that he'll be released outright by Armando Silguero of the Miami Herald. Recently suggested that Thomas could return uh, at a reduced salary. Recent comments by Adam Gase also indicated that Thomas could have a future with the team. Adam said, quote, I see it different than it seems everyone else does. He's done everything I've asked him to do. I wish there had been situation, uh, situations uh, we've called plays for him and haven't been able to get him the ball, uh, either by coverage or the ball just didn't go his way for whatever reason. When we've asked him to do the things in the running game, he's given a max effort. He's been there every day for us in practice and at games. So two things you can take away from this report. Number one. We're going to see A.J. Derby, which I'm very excited about. I think A.J. Uh, AJ Derby is a very interesting player. Um, he started off the season like on fire. I mean, he had a really, really good start to the season with the Broncos. For, for, for whatever reason, the Broncos uh, decided just to completely abandon the tight end position. But I can't remember how many games exactly he played with him. I think it was three or four. Uh, but when he was—I mean, he was on fire. I mean, he had one of the best catches of the year against the Raiders— uh, one-handed sound for a touchdown. He's an athletic guy. Obviously, he's a pretty dang good route runner. Uh, he seems like he's a smart player. He's a little undersized, maybe not the best run blocker in the world, but this team needs an athletic presence, an athletic presence at that tight end position. One of the, you know, biggest plays and one of the, um, obviously the tight end position means so much to Adam Gase's offense. Um, obviously, they ask him to run block, or tight ends, they ask an Adam Gase offense, you have to run block. You also have to be a very... Uh, pretty de a pretty dang good receiver as well. So it, you're asked to do a lot in this offense as a tight end. And one of the things we've been missing at the tight end position is athleticism, uh, and that's been very prevalent, especially in run after the catch situations. It's been very prevalent. You know, Anthony Fasano is not quite the player he used to be. Uh, he's a great route runner. He understands how to get open in zone, but he can't get separation on a consistent basis. He's a little bit older. Same thing with Julius Thomas. He just can't get separation on a, separation on a consistent basis. So getting an, uh, an athletic tight end uh, should help this Dolphins offense a great deal because we have our pretty dang, we have two really good run blockers in Marquise Gray uh, and Anthony Fasano. That's what they do best. Uh, or Marquise Gray is not a bad athlete uh, either, but those two do those uh, things best. Um, and obviously, AJ Derby is a really, from everything we've seen of him, every time he's been able to step on the field in regular season action, has been a pretty dang good receiver. So I'm excited to see him. I'm also excited to see Thomas Durante. I can't remember how you say his name. You know, most people forget former seventh round pick out of UCLA. The only reason he wasn't drafted higher is because a lot of people thought that. The transition, a lot of teams thought that they were going to have to transition him to receiver because he's a terrible run blocker. Um, and I, I say, in today's NFL, I don't know why you want your tight end to block anyway, especially in, in key scenarios and key uh, and key downs. You see Evan Ingram of the you know the Giants. He's not the greatest run blocker by any means, but he's still out there. You know, early in Tony Gonzalez's career, he couldn't run block, and look where he ended up. So. Uh, I think Thomas Durante is a very interesting prospect. There's a reason the Dolphins have kept, uh, have kept him around for so long. When he had his opportunities in 2016, you know, if you watch some tape, 
uh, Tannehill, I think, missed him one time in the end zone. He was wide open. Uh, and there was a couple other times where he was wide open, and uh, he just didn't get the rock. But I'm very excited to see what he can do as well. He's super smooth route runner, very similar to Jordan Reed. He's not the greatest run-after-the-catch guy like Jordan Reed, but he has that smooth route running ability, uh, and he's a super athletic tight end as well. So those are the things that get you excited if you're a Dolphins fan. We're going to see these young players. And after Adam Gase saying, you know, when asked, uh, what, what do the Dolphins have to play for for the rest of the season? He said their jobs. So it's going to be very interesting to see if Thomas and AJ can step up to the plate and capitalize on their opportunities because uh, I'm excited to see an athletic tight end in this offense, which we, which we haven't had all season. You know, the one criticism I have of Adam Gase, and it's a pretty big one this season, his reluctancy to co- to get away from players that he has a great relationship with, whether it's Jay Cutler or Julius Thomas. They have they both are obviously they're really good uh, really good friends. They go way back to you know his Denver days, uh, and it's unfortunate because you know Julius Thomas was not a good tight end all season. You know he dropped some touchdowns. He gave up an interception in the red zone. He couldn't get separation on a consistent basis, but yet we continue to to push the envelope with him. Uh, and I think it was Adam and it, to a fault. And I think Adam Gase's reluctancy to to bench him. Uh, is due to the relationship that they've had. So that's that's an unfortunate situation. It's an unfortunate thing that we've had to deal with this season. And it's it's all by circumstance, really. Granted, I think he would have been a better player with Tannehill, uh, but, you know, the whole Jay Cutler thing, I mean, it has been a disaster. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's see, uh, let's, 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 let's continue here. Uh, Dolphins haven't ruled out keeping Jay Cutler. Good God, good Lord. The Dolphins have committed to have uh, committed to having Ryan Tannehill serve as their starter next year. Uh, serve as their starter next year. However, they have not ruled out the possibility of retaining Jay Cutler as as the backup. Two sources with knowledge of the situation tell Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald. Of course, there's no guarantee that Cutler wants to return for another NFL season, whether it's a backup or a starter. But Tannehill's injury, uh, but Tana, uh, but before Tannehill's injury, Cutler had planned to serve as a color commentator for the NFL on Fox. The 34-year-old, 35 in April, may want to pivot back to the pro- uh, to the broadcast booth, particularly if he's being offered backup quarterback money, what uh, that is roughly in line with what he made on TV, uh, with what he would have made on TV. Uh, let's see here. The Dolphins have paid him ten million, ten million, significantly more than what he was going to make as an analyst. Jackson uh, says that Cutler would want a deal that matches or tops Nick Foles' deal, which is two, uh, which is a two-year, eleven million dollar pact with the Eagles. If he were to serve as the backup, uh, a, a salary of six million per year would be on the high side for a number two quarterback, and Matt Moore could instead be re-signed for significantly less. Ultimately, Cutler's performance in the final two games of the season weigh heavily on his future in Miami. He's produced better work at times down uh, down the stretch, excuse me, down the stretch than he did during a rough start. But the 12th year passer still put together an, incons- an inconsistent campaign. Cutler's best game came in week 14 when he threw for 263 yards and three touchdowns in a home upset of the Patriots. The Dolphins are 6-6 six and six in his starts. Cutler also has encountered an injury trouble that could play a role in his decision to pursue a 13th season. He spent time in concussion protocol and suffered a rib injury. This 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 is a uh, pretty much a no-brainer, I think, if you're a GM. I mean, I know it all comes down to what Adam wants, which is a good thing, and I always think that if you're going to have success in the NFL, your your GM, your president of operations, uh, and your coach have to have a great relationship because if they don't, then it's just not going to work. And they have to be on the same page too. So I, I'm glad that all three of those guys are on the same, pa- same page. And obviously Adam Gase is the, the decision maker. Uh, but, you know, I think Jay Cutler needs to get as far away from Miami as he possibly can. Uh, I have never seen... A wor- I, it's more, not, not that I haven't ever seen a worse performance uh, than Jay Cutler had against Buffalo, uh, but it's one of the worst performances I've ever seen by a Dolphins quarterback in the last how many ever how many ever years. And we have seen some bad quarterbacks come and go as a Dolphin. And some of those guys had you know excuses because they were young and they were getting thrown into the fire. Jay Cutler is in his 13th season. And he's throwing three picks and puts the ball on the ground three more times. So he had six turnovers. So yeah, that's not good. Obviously, it just he needs to get as far away from here as humanly possible. Um, 
and he, he he really really has brought the and i apologize to you guys because i was sticking up for cutler i thought you know that he would recapture some of that magic that he had with adam gase uh his first season they didn't win games don't get me wrong but jay cutler also didn't throw any any interceptions either so i thought he would kind of he would tone down the turnovers which would give us a chance to win games and obviously he didn't do that obviously he didn't push the ball down the field uh, good enough, and and it really really hurt us uh, this season. So I apologize for that for sure. Uh, I was deeply deeply wrong, and you guys were right. And Colin Kaepernick would have been the best. And whether you agree with him politically or not, Colin Kaepernick would have been the better player. Um, and I think we can all agree to that at least. Um, moving on to the next story, Dolphins want to extend wide receiver Jarvis Landry. The Dolphins have, at long last, decided they want to extend, I don't know if we read this in the last podcast, but I think we'll go through it one more time anyway, want to extend wide receiver Jarvis Landry, according to Armando Silguero of the Miami Herald. Of course, that doesn't mean a long-term deal is a far gone, uh, excuse me, a far gone conclusion, but Miami is close to uh, beginning negotiation negotiations with its slot receiver per Silguero. Landry 25 is scheduled to make an unrestricted free agent uh, is scheduled to be an unrestricted an unrestricted free agent next spring and the franchise tag hasn't been uh, hasn't been on the table given that it's a 16 million dollar price tag uh, is a bit steep for a slot weapon the Dolphins haven't made an extension offer to Landry as of August and given that he was mentioned in multiple trade rumors it was a fair it was fair to wonder whether Miami had any interest in keeping Landry for the long haul. Landry ultimately stayed put uh, while the NFL's trade deadline passed, and now the Dolphins are ready to talk contract. Notably, the club has reportedly been impressed with Landry's professionalism this season, per Selgaro. Landry hasn't said a word about his lack of an extension, even as other players on the Miami roster have been handed long-term deals, and the team's decision-makers uh, have noticed. On the field, Landry has already matched his uh, touchdown total from the 2015-2016 season, combined eight, but he's still not getting down the field with any regularity. In fact, his yards per reception is now a career low of 8.5, down from 7.1 a year ago. Football Outsider ranks Landry just 60th among 74 qualifiers in DYAR, a metric that grades a receiver in relation to replacement level production, which is a weird thing. Landry is thought to be uh, receptive to a potential negotiations, but the Dolphin potential negotiations, but the Dolphins will likely have to make a few financial maneuvers before signing him. Miami is currently in the red. Uh, is currently in the red according to over the cap and has only 15 million in cap saves for the 2018 season so there's a lot to digest there obviously a lot of numbers flying around um, and a lot of other things flying around as well so uh, and the whole his questioning the production of Jarvis Landry who in my opinion if had if he had a can this would be this would have been his best season I, I, I think watching him this is the best I've ever seen him uh, this is the best I think he's ever looked in in this scheme because I think obviously Adam had a year with him and he understood what he did best going into year two and he really capitalized on some of those things and, and did a great job of getting him involved in the red zone as much as possible and I think he's definitely in his prime uh, for sure and I think uh, I, I mean again this is just the best he's ever looked I think all, his his experience and his ability are you know emerging and his and his uh, knowledge within the scheme all of those things are at an all time high. And I think he's going to have a great career. Obviously, I think he one day will be a, a Hall of Famer and get a gold jacket. Obviously, it's, it's, it's hard for a receiver to get in, but uh, I definitely think he will one day. He definitely will go down as one of the best Dolphins ever. I mean, he's had, when you look at all Dolphins start to the career, he's had one of the best starts to a career that a Dolphin has ever had. So uh, he's, he's definitely uh, a great player, and hopefully he continues to be that um, with an aqua and orange jersey. But again, and again, when the question is production, to go back to that real quick, when he said he had a career low 8.5 down from a 12.1 a year ago, well, why the heck do you think that happened? Okay, we have, we've we've had a revolving door at quarterback. Not only that, but the, the quarterback that we thought to be the starter this entire season has played like utter trash. So that obviously has to be a factor in that as well. And I think, you know, it's funny because we've had, we have this young nucleus that I think, other than Devontae Parker are all hitting their prime like literally all hitting their prime and it's a very exciting time it's the worst luck in the world that one of those years got wasted with Jay Cutler because I think Tannehill 
is hitting his prime finally. I think Jarvis is hitting his prime. Kenyon's hitting his prime. Uh, you know, I think Laramie, after this season in his third year, uh, you know, Clyde Christensen had a great quote where he said he's had back-to-back rookie seasons because he's had to change positions both years. So I think they're all hitting their prime at the right time. And obviously Jesse Davis, who has been a surprise this season. Uh, Juwan James, who is in his prime. I thought he had his best season before he got injured. Uh, it's unfortunate that the, the quarterback of the team got injured because I would have loved to have seen what he did to build on his 2016 season, and I would have loved to have seen what he would have done to finish that season because he was he was on a hot streak. He was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL over that six-game stretch, really seven-game stretch uh, if you count the Cardinals game. Uh, and I, 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 it's, an, it's an unfortunate situation because they're all growing together and they're all... Um, really hitting that stride so i'm excited to see what the future holds all right this next new story comes from the miami herald and it comes from barry jackson uh we're gonna le- we're gonna read some quick notes from his article that he did today some very interesting nuggets in here with julius thomas out for the final two games we could see more of tight end aj derby behind anthony fasano on sunday obviously i think all dolphins fans are gonna be very excited this is what adam gase had to say about him he- adam said quote he can catch and run block uh Let's see here. Is that all he had to say? <laughs> yep, that's all he had to say. So, hey, that's a good sign. Uh, I can't wait to see what uh, AJ Derby does. I really can't. I mean, I, I, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Um, also, Christian uh, Clyde Christensen, the offensive quarter, said Marquise Gray snaps will increase naturally. Uh, and then, let's see here. Uh, Kenyon Drake. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's some things about Kenyon Ken- Ken Drake that Clyde said. We're not going to get into that. We're going to keep moving on here. The Dolphins went into uh, the season determined to make a de- decision on whether defensive tackle Jordan Phillips, this is about Jordan Phillips, obviously, is worth keeping around. He has done enough to convince the team he is, in fact. Defensive Matt, uh, defensive coordinator Matt Burke said he now considers Phillips to be a reliable player, something coaches would, wouldn't necessarily uh, have said in the past. Uh, and the, why that's important is because obviously the inconsistencies that Jordan Phillips has has had over his career, another player that's hitting his stride, uh, and I think he he will be a free agent this year, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or no no no, I think it'll be in two seasons. I, I can't exactly remember. I always get his draft and Juwan James draft uh, messed up. I don't know why. Um, but I'm pretty sure it'll be in two seasons. So I think Jordan Phillips is definitely worth keeping around. Uh, he's de- he's definitely been. Very good, and he's dominated some games this season. And he hasn't been healthy all year, but he has definitely improved upon uh, his 2016 game campaign, which is what you want to see, obviously, with a with a young player. Uh, some other nuggets here: defensive end uh, Cameron Malvo and uh, linebacker Stephon Anthony have made a case to have roles in 2017. Burke said both have graded out well since being injected in the lineup. Anthony Anthony. Uh, excuse me, Stefan Anthony a month ago, Malvo two weeks ago. Uh, Matt Burke said, quote, both have performed very very well for us, uh, which is great. I, I think any Dolphins fan, when you lock eyes on number 44, uh, when he's in the game, he always makes plays. And he's a great, he's, he's by far the best coverage linebacker we have on their roster. So I'm excited to see what he does in the future. Uh, some other notes here. C- Clyde Christensen said the Dolphins don't want their players uh, with a defender around them stretching, or excuse me, stretching out the ball uh, past the goal line. Uh, plays that badly cost Pittsburgh and Oakland in losses last week, so uh, it's not very important. Uh, I think, and if you want my opinion on that, I think you get your ding, get the ball out. I think touchdowns are so hard to get that if you get what Derek Carr did when he fumbled it out, touch, you gotta you gotta lay it all out on the line, in my opinion. All right, moving on. Uh, Miami Dolphins defensive coordinator Matt Burke offers blunt criticism of three key players. So I thought this was interesting. And uh, let's see here. Uh, let's, let's see here. Let's get these these uh, players here. Miami Dolphins defensive coordinator Matt Burke off, off excuse me offered sharp, candid criticism criticism of linebacker Kiko Alonso and safety Rashad Jones and defensive end Cameron Wake on Thursday. In particular, Burke said he needs Alonzo to miss uh, to miss fewer plays than he did in Sunday's loss at Buffalo. He said, "quote He had a lot of tackles uh, statistically." Burke said of Alonzo. Uh, quote, he was involved in a lot of plays, I think, in general, uh, and this will apply to Kiko, but also some of the other guys. Our guy, our good players can't not take plays off, but can't miss on plays. Alonzo missed a couple of tackles that he can't miss, period. 
Like, if we want to be the defense that we want to be, and we want to win games that we want to win, he can't miss a couple of those plays. That's something Kiko has done this entire season, and that's something that he did last year. Uh, he's not a physical guy. Like, he is not a thumper. He is honestly not even a good coverage linebacker. So, I don't know what he does well at the, any, any, anymore. Uh, so, uh, this is what he said about Rashad Jones. Rashad can't, excuse me, Rashad. Uh, Rashad can't miss a tackle, Burke said. Uh, Cam can't miss a tackle. Uh, so, so, he's just basically kind of overly criticizing. Uh, and even to compare Cam Newton or Cam Newton, Cameron Wake and Rashad Jones to Kiko Alonso is, I think, a little little bit of a stretch there. Uh, so that article was meaningless. Uh, let's move on. I should have read that before doing the podcast. That was very stupid and meaningless. Uh, and again, I don't think you should judge Wake and Rashad in the same breath as Kiko Alonso. A health update on the guys, uh, or help on, excuse me, a health update on Ryan Tannehill. So this is. This should be big, obviously big news for us all. If there was any positive to take away from last week's crushing loss to Buffalo, Buffalo, it's this. Ryan Tannehill, four months removed from re- reconstructive knee injury, looked quite spry on the sidelines. This is what Clyde had to say about it. He said, quote, I think he was just trying to stay warm, uh, he said with a chuckle on Thursday. But it was, a good, it was good seeing him bounce off those knees and jumping. Uh, his feedback is that he feels really good and that he's on pace on the timeline that he needs to be on. So that's really encouraging. That's great for him. I'm happy for him. Uh, uh, see, Christensen added, I remember thinking that thing looks pretty darn good. I'm so excited for him to come. Dude, I, I cannot wait for this. I really honestly can't. Uh, and so do the chances that Tannehill will be ready to start the 2018 season as the Miami Dolphins' undisputed quarterback. Even though the Dolphins are mulling around bringing Jay Cutler back next year, it would be as a backup. Tannehill is the guy, assuming he has no setbacks. Tannehill has not played since injuring his left knee on December 11, 2016. He, he decided to rehab it instead of undergo reconstructive surgery, uh, but, there, uh, but then tore it uh, in the second week of training camp. He has been rehabbing like ma- a maniac ever since, even running stairs before some Dolphins games. Uh, this is what Adam Gase had to say about it. He said, quote, he's with uh, the trainers lifting. Uh, anytime I ever see him, he's in the weight room. Seeing his move and his, his ability to do some of the things he's doing, it's been impressive. So maybe he's going to be faster when he comes back. Faster, bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, he's definitely going to be smarter. And that's one of the things Tannehill has always been, he's always been a smart player. Uh, that is only one part of Tannehill's normal, normal day, however. He's acted as a volunteer coach, helping craft the game plan, sitting in, in on meetings, tutoring young teammates, and providing input during games. Uh, Christensen said, quote, it's been different, but there has been a role. I've been really impressed with him that he's uh, in all the meetings. A lot of guys disappear, you go on injured reserve, and you kind of, uh, and then you kind of disappear, and it's hard on IR it's hard because you don't feel a part of the team and you're uh, doing uh, when you're doing your treatment, which is a, gr- a great thing for Clyde to bring up because if you guys have been, I mean, you see like um, a great example of that, obviously Brandon Marshall, when he got put on our early in the season, he was gone. Not to say that he's committed to the Giants, like Tannehill's committed to the Dolphins. Obviously Tannehill's invested a lot of his life into this franchise. So that's, that's a completely different thing. But Tannehill is a very dedicated player um, and I'm super excited uh, for him and his future, and hopefully when he comes back, he wins comeback player of the year. That would be awesome. Uh, I think that's it for the news. I think I think we're pretty much done after all that. Uh, other than that, I think Todd McShay's draft came out. I don't know if it was Mel um, Mel Kuyper's or Todd McShay's, uh, but he had us selecting Quentin Nelson. So I threw that in the news stories as well. And another uh, another. Little nugget here. Plenty of talk about this. Is, this comes from Omar Kelly. Plenty of talk about Dolphins tight end AJ Derby from Miami's coaches today. He's going to play his first game on Sunday. So again, AJ Derby. We're really, really, really looking forward to that. Another little nugget before we move on. Drake putting up huge numbers since the Jai trade, uh, which obviously, uh, which we're, I think we're all excited about. And you know what? And we knew, and I knew. At the beginning of the, when we drafted him and what we saw from him in his rookie season is how uh, is how talented he is and he's shown he's got I didn't know he had the vision that he had that he has uh, I didn't think he had that kind of vision um, and he he has great like he has Pro Bowl caliber All Pro caliber running back like he ha- he sees things that 
I, and he has the ability to, to get there uh, faster than anybody else can uh, to close the hole. So he's a, a great find, and, I, and I'm, I'm excited for his future as well. But I think, we'll, I think we'll read a little bit of this here. Since the trade, Drake is, uh, has 487 yards, which is insane, and three touchdowns on 96 carries. And when he left, he didn't even start, and he has those numbers. On 96 carries, at five and, and a 5.2 yards per carry, uh, he put it back to back at 100 yards game, 100 yard games against the Broncos, the Patriots. He would have had another one if um, we kept running the ball. And and you know what? When at when we went, uh, excuse me, when we went up to Buffalo, that should have been it. We should have been like we're running Drake 50 times this game. If he if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I would rather lose on Kenyon Drake's legs than Jay Cutler's arm. That's what should have been the game plan going up there, and that would have helped Cutler out. Probably. Hopefully he wouldn't have thrown as many interceptions. Yada yada yada. Coulda woulda shoulda. Uh, let's move on. Um, Drake has additional 217 receiving yards and a touchdown on 26 catches since the Ajayi trade. Drake has thrived under the increased workload in recent weeks. He's been able to show show off his quick feet that enable him to make lateral cuts in a flash without losing speed. With his ability, he's uh, eluded defenders in the hole and bounce runs to the edge for positive gains that should have been dead at the line of scrimmage. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, the, that precisely uh, what he did on his 31-yard run against the Bills this past weekend on a power run to the right. Drake was met behind the line of scrimmage by a defensive lineman who won his block, but Drake calmly cut laterally to avoid the defender and, adju- and adjusted his track to the edge. He then broke contain, ran around a defensive back on the edge, and burst down the sideline for a big gain. He's also he also has been ineffective as a receiver. The Dolphins are starting uh, to get him more and more involved in the pass game, moving him out of the backfield and lining him up uh, in the slot or on the outside. His quickness allows him to run strong routes that create plenty of separation against linebackers and safeties. The early signs are uh, certainly positive for the Dolphins as Drake becomes more uh, more and more of a legitimate threat with each passing week <clears throat> and you know what me even thinking just thinking about it right now and how upset i've been over this uh especially last week's loss because i thought we should have won that game i thought the team played well i just thought the quarterback let everybody down and i and i stand by that and i and i swear to god the quote the 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 thing that he said after the game or color said that we've got to do better and all that other i'm like oh god it's it's like a big ben roethlisberger thing all over again yeah because you can do no wrong it, it's ridiculous. I cannot wait till he's gone. Uh, but yeah, that, we should have done that. We should have just... Kenyon should have been the quarterback. He literally should have thrown passes. You know, everything should have... I'm, I'm joking, but I, I everything should have revolved around him. Uh, and we should have fed off of him. Uh, and we should have relied on him to win us that game. Like I said, he should have got like 50 touches that game. Uh, and I think that would probably would have been our best chance to win that game. We probably would have won the time of possession. Uh, obviously, he finished with more rushing yards off of, off of like 10, 10, or, 10 or 13 carries than Shady did, which is crazy because they were trying to run out the clock in the second half, uh, and our defense stood tall uh, when they tried to do that. So it's unfortunate, and I know I'm I'm looking at the past and what we should have done, but again, what it could have, should have. It's unfortunate. <laughs> it's super, super unfortunate because if we would have won that game, I'd, I'd – it, a nine and seven team would have made it, and we have so many tiebreakers with the Titans and the Chargers. We most likely would have gotten in. Um, it, it, it's just it's 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 unfortunate. But all right, let's move on to uh, the next segment. All right, let's move on to previewing game day. I, there's not a lot of AFC East news to talk about. One because the AFC East is decided. Obviously, we have crowned a champion, which is again the New England Patriots. <sighs> and uh, you know, obviously, the only thing, other thing I could say is hopefully we play spoiler to the Bills um, and keep them from getting into the playoffs, which would be great. Uh, but that's about it. So let's move on to previewing the Kansas City Chiefs game, which is this game's going to be. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to that Bills game again, and I because I think we're going to beat the cheeks of, off of them because uh, I don't think their offensive line can handle our D line, <clears throat> and I think that's something that we saw when we played them. Uh, this past this past week, but uh, looking at this Chiefs game, I, I think the way we can we can win the game uh, in terms of strategy is uh, dominating line of scrimmage. 
if we control the clock on offense and don't give them a ton of opportunities, because their offense really hasn't been the issue, it's their defense. Um, but if we can dominate their offensive line, get out to an early lead, and let our defensive line go win us the game. And again, that's something that we I've said every single week because that's that's the way we win football games. But their offensive line for Kansas City is not a good one. It's very similar to ours, and it's not we're we have more talent on our our, our offensive line, but their offensive line has the same issues. Uh, they're not a, see we're a really good pass blocking offensive line. We suck in the run game. We're just not physical enough. Uh, the Chiefs are bad at pass blocking and uh, run blocking, so that's the difference. But I'm not, I'm just saying the similarities between us is they're not physical enough in the run in the run game. Although that's what they do the best, in my opinion, is run block. Uh, but their offensive line is trash, um, and that's some of the reasons that they've lost a lot of their games. And, and you know, Alex Smith has been poorly protected on third and long situations. He's had to make a lot of plays with his legs. You know, some of the biggest highlights you've seen for the Chiefs this year is him running around. He had a 70-yarder against the Jets that kept him in that game. Uh, he had a couple scrambles against the Steelers. So that's something that we're going to have to look out for. But if, if we got out to an early lead in this game um, and uh, – and, and let the D-line go win it for us. We should win this game, uh, and that'll crowd, obviously, playing an arrowhead is very difficult, so hopefully we can do some of those things. In terms of players that I need to show up and that we need to see, you know, I'm not even going to... We've talked about A.J. Derby. We've talked about Thomas Durante. Let's talk about some other players. Marcus Peters is playing in this game, so whoever he's guarding doesn't necessarily mean that player is locked down, but pretty much it's going to be tough you know, tough sledding for the entire game. Now, whether he matches up with... I doubt he matches up with J, uh, Jarvis because Jarvis moves around a lot. I don't think Marcus is going to follow him the entire game, but we'll see. Uh, but Devontae Parker needs to step up against a very bad secondary for the Kansas City Chiefs who have given up a lot of yards. This defense is old and slow. They have a lot of old, formerly great players. Uh, when, you think about, when you think about Derek Johnson and Justin Houston and Tom Mahali... Uh, and some of those players, most of their great, their best players on defense are older. And, and in the secondary, obviously, they've might, struggled mightily without Eric Berry. They play a similar defense to the Bills. They play a lot of too deep, uh, a lot of bend but don't break. Uh, and that really leaves them vulnerable up front, uh, which is the same problem the Bills have. So uh, hopefully we can take advantage of that and not get away from the running game. Even if there is a couple negative plays, let's say D Ford or Justin Houston or Derek Johnson make a, like a huge play for a five yard loss. I don't care. We're going to keep continue to run the football because I think that is the best chance we have on offense. Letting Cutler go win us a game. He did it against New England, even though Kenyon had a great game in that game and, you know, gave him a lot of third and shorts, but uh, he made plays in that game to, for us to win it. Uh, even though I hate Jane Cutler, it's hard not to admit that. So in this game, we really take a ton of pressure off of him and not rely on this his arm to win the, win us the game because we saw what happens when that happens. Um, so yeah, I think it's very similar. Their defense, like I said, is very similar to the Bills uh, and and in the in the fact that they really don't change what they do. They just they're like, okay, if you score on us, you're not scoring a touchdown, you're scoring a field goal. We don't care how many yards we give up as long as we just don't give up the big play. So that's very similar philosophies to what the Bills have right now because they don't have a lot of talent in the secondary and they don't have a lot of talent. Uh, they, they, You know what? I, they, they do have a lot of talent on their D-line when you talk about you know Allen Bailey and uh, some of those players, but they just don't have enough in the secondary. So, uh, and again, they've because of their two deep look that they constantly do. They rarely switch to a you know a, you know bring a safety in the box or a bare front or something like that to stop the run. They rarely do that. So, naturally, hopefully our our offensive line can do a good enough job of um, of blocking and giving Kenyon Drake some lanes. Um, so yeah, and again for players that I want to show up, obviously I want to continue to see Kenyon be as dominant as he has been because there has not there has there have there has not been one game other than the fumbles where he hasn't been dominant like ever since he was the starter he's been dominant you know in the Bills game he just didn't get enough opportunities so in these final two games and even in that game he was dominant but in these final two games if he can if he's dominant not not the fact like if he just spurts out and doesn't he has like four you know 40 yard uh, 40 yards rushing or even lower than that on like 20 carries and I'm like okay maybe Maybe we need to make sure we have another guy and just in case he doesn't pan out. But if he has another two dominating, get two dominant games where he's 100 yards in total yards from scrimmage and goes off again, 
then uh I, not that he hasn't already but i think he has submitted his his place as the future starter uh at, for the dolphins so i'm going to continue to see his dominance Devonte parker i mean my god I, do something do something if you guys remember the whole honeymoon phase with him and you know uh, jay color and Devonte parker in training camp where, where it was thought to be they had this great chemistry and all of a sudden that never happened so hopefully we see some of that magic the last two uh two games uh jarvis jarvis is jarvis we know what he what he can do uh, i want to continue to see stefan anthony excel at his role as a coverage linebacker and maybe even start him uh, for god's sakes i think he's played better than kiko now whether he'll look the same with more snaps or he, who knows but kiko alonso continues to just be so unaware of the details on defense that it hurts like he's one of the most un i don't know if he watches film i honestly don't think he does i don't know he doesn't have the feel and the instincts that you need to have as a linebacker it, sometimes you just kind of scratch your head sometimes he, he he has moments but most of the time he doesn't so but maybe we'll see some more of stefan anthony charles harris when i want to continue to see him get quarterback pressures that's what he's been, i mean he hasn't got a lot of sacks but he, he's definitely gotten some pressures and he's been effective and hopefully we can see some sacks the last two weeks here uh and you know Cordrea, uh want to continue to see him grow and be great obviously Xavier, who's also been dominant uh these last few weeks yeah, these last three weeks, really, and the, one of the things I said after the Broncos game is I want him to see, I want to see him be consistent, and man, has he been consistent. And not only has he been consistent, but he's been consistently dominant, so hopefully we can continue to see him do that against the Chiefs, and maybe we'll pick out, you know, pick off a, a short route from Alex Smith, and that's something that, another key to this game, uh, is limiting Tyreek Hill, and Tyreek Hill, whether that's a screen or that's a deep, especially screens, because I don't think they're going to take a lot of deep shots, because Alex Smith really struggles to throw uh, in November and December, I just don't think he has the arm to cut through some of that wind. So, um, I think the, I don't, and I think that's the reason you've seen not as many deep shots. But I, you know, I, obviously, I forgot to mention Travis Kelsey, who's a huge factor in this game. But um, <clears throat> Tyree Kill limiting him on those screen passes and not letting him get a, a lot of daylight and tackling is going to be huge in this game. Uh, Travis Kelsey. I don't think we're going to be able to stop. Hopefully, we can contain, but tight ends have been an issue for this team. He's going to be a a player that they're going to get involved a lot in this game. Not that they don't regularly, regularly. I can't even say the word right now. Not that they, not that they don't anyway, but uh, he's definitely going to be a point of emphasis uh, going against us because of our struggles against tight ends. I think we've done a way better job because now that we have TJ and Rashad. Hopefully he matches up with one of those two on a consistent basis or we have one of those two within the area and not let Kiko Alonso just be a, hey man, you go over there and yeah, go do what you can because that's what we did against the Raiders and obviously that didn't work. <clears throat> so hopefully we can clean some of that stuff up. But yeah, you know, I, I hate to say it and I, I really do, but this season has really left a bad taste in my mouth and we're not even that bad and it just, it feels like we have, even we've only won one game. Uh, the disappointment level of this season is uh, through the roof, and you know what? I don't know what I expected. I don't honestly don't know what I expected with the, 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 everything that we've been through and the quarterback situation. But just hopefully we can get as far away from this season as humanly possible, and we can correct some of the mistakes that we've made uh, in terms of roster building. And we this team desperately needs a physical guard, and hopefully we can get that in the draft as well. I don't know why I had to throw that in there, but I hope we do c get Quentin Nelson. Because uh, I think he's a great player. And then people are like, oh, it's too high for a guard. I, can we just get... Ha, how about we draft one and not worry about a guard anymore? Because I'm sick and tired of talking about guards. Uh, let's see here. I've never talked about guards so many times. And, and, and Dolph, like, I can't remember a time that we've, you know, we've all collected. And this is why we should never have gotten rid of Richie Incognito. Anyway. Uh, it should be the Richie Incognito curse, for God's sakes. Let's, 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 let's move on uh, to the next segment, which is the Miami Dolphins fan Q&A um yeah so yeah just a lot of stuff going on in the organization and you know what I think this organization is gonna be better for it I think this experience is gonna help Gates down the road I just I cannot wait to move on from this it's, it, I, I, I really can't all right let's get into the fan questions uh this question comes from lol he says do you do you think we still have a chance of making the playoffs absolutely not there's not no no, and I and and to be honest with you, I don't care. At the, like I said, even when we were in contention for it, I was like, I don't, I, I just don't care. 
I don't care. And you know the reason I don't care is because this, this our quarterback is is just just been a dang downer. And uh, yeah, but no, there is no chance we make it. Uh, JJ the boss says I want Quentin Nelson. I think we're all on that that boat now. Uh, Ricky uh, Ricardo says Skags. I want an honest opinion of what you th- would think this season could have been with uh, without all of the injuries and distractions that this team faced in this, uh, with, in the <clears throat> what this season could have been. Um, I definitely think this team would have been a 10-win team. Whether we would have won ten, more than 10 games or not, I don't know. But this team definitely, in my opinion, would have been a wild card team. Uh, if we, you know, if we could have kept Tony, Raekwon... Tannehill, uh, I can't remember who else I'm missing right now, but yeah, it, 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 injuries definitely played a role in this season, but if, if we could have kept everybody healthy, or relatively healthy, um, especially with Tannehill, then I think we definitely would have been a 10-win team for sure, for sure. Uh, this, this next question goes, uh, this, this next goes, this next question comes from Take Me Out. He says, color is so inconsistent. Need to draft a young quarterback to groom and also replace, uh, also replaced our punter, Matt Hawk. I think both are no-brainers. Uh, yeah, I would agree with most of the, most of those things. You know, the whole drafting a quarterback, all that other stuff. I don't think, I mean, I wouldn't mind drafting one in the third round, but I don't think the first two, if we drafted one in the second round, I don't think I would be upset about it, but, uh, uh, I wouldn't be like, dumb. What the heck are we doing? Uh, but uh, you know, I don't think it would be the greatest thing. I think Tannehill. I I something about it, man. I just feel really good about next season and and what he's gonna bring to the table. And I felt good about him going into this season, and I it just is unfortunate. Uh, this question comes from Jacob B. He says, "I want that caveman Matt Burke fired." We have a plethora of game film, uh, game film of Tyrod Taylor doing exactly what he did today. Exactly what he did today. That is uh, running and throwing short to in- intermediate routes, and yet Miami can't stop him. How come other teams can? Matt Burke uh, was never qualified to be the defensive coordinator, therefore hire John Fox or, or Marvin Lewis. I've seen enough of this. Well, I would argue that with my counterpoint to that is... I honestly, I mean, obviously one of the drives he kept alive with his legs, and that obviously resulted into a touchdown. He obviously rushed for one too, but they did nothing in that second half. And our defense played so well in that in that in that second half, and even really the first half that I they gave up 21 points. But I think overall the performance was really good, and I think the offense just, I mean, you got, if you want to be like I've said this a million times, I think if I if if we were with Tannehill and Think about what we did last year to the Bills. The defense is actually worse than it was last year. I would have taken, like, okay, the Bills are going to score 21 points. Fine. Shady's going to finish below 100 yards rushing. Great. Do we win the game? No. How? I don't have no idea. Because Jay Cutler wants to turn the ball over six times. That's why. I blame this loss on Jay Cutler. Don't blame this on the, the team. This this question comes from Ronald. He says, what moves do you see the Dolphins make to clear clear some cap space i think um i mean obviously the givens julius is gone uh i would say jermon i don't think is a cap hit so he's gone though uh some other kiko i think is gone um kiko needs to be gone after that i mean i don't know why we he, he needs to be gone other than that i really i think everything else is pretty much it could go either either way with that one with some of the other players. Ronald says, uh, what do you think Asiata, why do you think Asiata hasn't gotten any chances to you to play even with the injuries of the O-linemen? Uh, I ain't born, buying the red shirt crap. I don't think Isaac is the, the future of, uh, uh, I don't think he has a future on the team. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't think he has a future on this offensive line. Um, I think if he was good enough, he would have played, especially since how Adam Gase has been so, uh, He's just been so. I mean, he's been honest with the offensive line for since he's been here. I think if Asiata was at the level that we thought he would be at, then he would have played. So I just don't think Asiata. And I hopefully Quentin Nelson is the future uh, of this offensive line. That's what I'm hoping. I just don't think Asiata has a future here, or as a starter. He might be a depth guy for his career, but I don't think he's a starter. 
Thomas the Kid TV, but who knows? We never know. I you, you never know. I just don't think. It, hopefully, he can build off of that in the second season. And it sucks to just give up on a player. You know, I don't want to give up on him, but we'll see. Uh, this question comes from Thomas the Kid TV. He says, "Let's not give up hope yet. If Cutler shows up and we win the next two games, there is still a strong chance of making the playoffs, uh, making it to the playoffs." Um, as long as the Bills lose uh, the next two and either the Chargers or the Ravens lose one. I just wish Cutler cared as much as we do. Fins up, Kansas City, Kansas City will be a challenge. Do we have any chance of beating Kansas City away? We do have a great chance of beating Kansas City. I think we match up with them well. Other than the Travis Kelsey matchup, which I think is not a good matchup, other than that, I think we match up with them pretty, pretty good. As long as we get some kind of consistent quarterback play, so... Uh, this, this this question comes from Ray Gonzalez. He says, "Did we lose this game because of Cutler? Uh, of, because of Cutler's poor decision making? Yes. And it's not even. Dis- I don't know what he thought he saw. I don't understand. Because as a, if you want to be a great quarterback, and it doesn't matter if you watch a defense and see what coverage they're in. I, I don't know. Like, I understand him throwing maybe on a uh, throw over the middle and he gets picked off underneath, or he throws an out route and there's somebody underneath there. They have underneath coverage there, or." Any of that stuff, but he was throwing to nobody. Like, I don't know if the... I mean, his accuracy was terrible. His ball placement was terrible. I mean, he really just did not show up to that game. Honestly. The gamer one, two, three, four, five, And the whole, like, he hurt his hand. Like, no. I don't care if you hurt... If you flick your finger on a helmet. That doesn't, that doesn't mean you, you throw 20 yards to the right and then throw an interception to Ladarius White. Who's the only player in a NFL player there? Uh, the gamer one two three four five says DP looked good this week. What are your thoughts? Um, not re- I mean yeah he he made a couple of great plays or immaculate plays with some big catches there. I just want to see more of it consistently. I don't I honestly could care if he had 150 yards now I would be happy about it of course I would be excited but I just want to keep seeing that because we've seen that from him we've seen him have great games and then just be just go missing in action and it's just ridiculous. The gamer one two three four five says, "Why did the dolphin? Why did the dolphins always have to lose and the Patriots always have to win?" Uh, that's a stupid question. That's, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's a stupid question. I'm just kidding. I I, I don't uh, I don't. That's not really a question. Anyway, <laughs> gamer one two three five says, "What do you think of my Super Bowl prediction? The Rams versus Jags with the Rams winning?" Mm, I don't see that happening. I, you know, there's a lot to be said with the young quarterbacks. If, if you're a rookie quarterback and you make it to the Super Bowl. It's usually usually either you have a god team, like you have a really good football team, uh, and your starter got hurt, and you and that rarely ha- I mean, I don't, I'm trying to think of uh, who who's done that, uh, but it's 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 almost impossible, is my point. So I think you have to, and I think experience goes a long way. Uh, I think playoff football is is a completely different thing, a completely different animal than um, regular season football. Uh, December football is playoff football, uh, but playoff football. Is play? I mean that you're playing the best teams in the NFL. So I just don't see Goff. I mean, he might win a couple of games, or you know, or maybe even win one. Uh, but I don't see him going to the Super Bowl, and I don't see Blake Bortles taking his team to the Super Bowl either. The way he turns the ball over, I just no. Listen, he's played two very bad. Everybody's like, oh, he's on this hot streak. He's played two really all of the games that he's had great games in. He, there were bad teams, like they were just bad teams. So we'll see. We'll see what he could do against a great defense. Uh, let's move on to uh, this. Uh, the Gabriel One Two Three Four Five says, "Can either the Jags or Ravens beat the Patriots in the playoffs? The Jags or Ravens? The Jags could beat them. Could uh, if Blake Bortles doesn't turn the ball over. And you know, people forget. Oh, the Jaguars have this great defense. They can win the game with their defense. They forget that Bill Belichick is on the other sideline and he coaches his defense. So." Even though the Patriots defense isn't good, it would take like a 200 200 yard performance from Leonard Fournette offensively for them to have uh, a chance of winning that game. Because Blake Bortles, if I don't see him, if he if he's asked to pass 40 to 50 times to win that game, they're gonna get blown out. So I, I just don't see that happening. And I, and who else is the other team? Let's see, kind of the the Ravens definitely can't because uh, their offense is just not good, and Joe Flacco is on some kind of low low point in his career right now the best team that has a chance to beat them is the Steelers 
Fly Solo says, uh, uh, says, donate to my GoFundMe page. I'm a ge- I'm getting bullied for being a Dolphins fan. It's, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm guessing that was a joke. Not a very funny joke, Fly Solo, but hopefully we can get a better one in there next time. Fly Solo 28 says, TJ had a pick six, made a good play on the ball, uh, dropped it. Should put him at, at linebacker and get Derwin James. He is a game changer, uh, and he's going to be a really good player. Uh, he plays just like Sean Taylor. Can't pass on him. Best player in the draft. Um, uh, depending on where we're drafting, I don't think Derwin James falls out of the top ten. I don't think we finish in the top ten. All that is relative. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Colin Klein says, "Would it be wise to trade Kiko Alonso and Parker, then go out and draft any of the following: Quint Nelson, Ray Quan Smith, or Calvin Ridley? If I if I can get two first rounders for Devontae, I almost I almost might do that uh, and replace him with Calvin Ridley. I almost might do that. I, I think I would ab- actually. I think I absolutely would do that. Um, do, and I, again, that's if I get another one, which I don't think you're getting another first round pick for Devontae Parker. The Anthony." Um, uh, this question comes from D'Anthony. He says, seeing as how Jarvis has played, Jarvis has played, will we sign him next year? Yeah, I, I, I think it's going to happen. Uh, D'Anthony says, also says, uh, what's up with Devontae Parker? Man, uh, he's he's like the sore in our back, not playing to the expectations we thought he would bring. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it's unfortunate. And this is the story of his career so far as a Dolphin. Hopefully he can clean it up. Dante says, we are definitely not keeping Cutler next year. So what do you think we will uh, do at the quarterback uh, position next year, seeing as how we might choose a quarterback of the draft? I think Tannehill is going to be your guy. And I would not be surprised if you saw a quarterback. The quarterback's never called in the third round, or second round for that matter. This question comes from Axel. He says, should we start David Fell's these last two games, no. I mean, if you guys want to get destroyed, then yeah, but I don't know. Uh, Ethan says, uh, this question comes from Ethan Jesse. He says, what are your thoughts for next year? I believe with an easier schedule, we will have a Rams-Jaguars type of season and either get the fifth or sixth seed or contend with the Patriots for the division. Mm, that's a tough one. Um, I think we're definitely going to be a playoff contender, and I definitely think we can win 10 games um and I, I you know the way the AFC East is right now it's very broken it's very easy to get in um there's so many teams that uh are, are just you know you know the AFC is just I don't know maybe the AFC recoups next season maybe the Broncos get a quarter who you never know but yeah I could totally see that I think we're definitely a playoff roster for sure and I if prediction right now if Tannehill comes back healthy we fix the guard position um I think we win 11, uh, 11 or 10 games uh, in the 2018 season. So quote me on that. Uh, I'm betting. Uh, uh, the next question comes from Ethan. He says, what are your thoughts for next year? I believe with any... Oh, that was the same question I just read. Uh, this, this last question comes from um, Ethan. He says, given we uh, don't lose key players, uh, play, players uh, play in London, lose our bye week, and have the toughest schedule in the league again. And that was more of a comment. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think we're all on the same wavelength here as, as fans. Um, some of the same issues that we've been dealing with, some of the same problems. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate. I'm excited for 2018. I'm excited for this upcoming draft to see what we do. And I, I'm very excited for the future of this franchise. But again, we have to watch number six play quarterback for the last two games, which is just great. Uh, so, yeah, that is going to be, guys. And I'm excited to see what Adam Gase does. I, I, I truly believe what he's built here in Miami that no other coach has been able to do since Shula left. Even Jimmy Johnson, I don't think, has built a culture that has been accepted like it has in Miami with the Dolphins. And I think he's building something great here, and hopefully we continue to see that grow. Uh, and I, I think it's going to pay off next year. So I'm Sky Extra 83 and I will see you guys in the next one.